beautiful Zion that dwelleth with the daughter of Babylon. For thus saith Yahweh of hosts, and for the glory hath he sent me unto the nations which spoiled you. For he that toucheth you toucheth the apple of his eye. Shalom, brothers and sisters. I'm Brother Jonas, and the title of this video is Vladimir Putin Acknowledges Black Jesus with Russian Icons. Russian President Vladimir Putin acknowledges Black Jesus by bringing attention to the Russian icons, showing some of his military leaders in Ukraine the gold case with Black Jesus. He also spread other icons around to other nations for show in museums. For many of my people, the Israelites, this is a great joy for them to witness this with their own eyes. Wow. And it's confirmation for many people around the world that believe God's true people are primarily black. People of color. But some also look white. Some also look Asian. From generations of raping, colonizing, slavery, Jim Crow, and interracial mixing through fornication and marriage. Warning. This is a warning to all of you. Stay away from DNA testing, using DNA testing to determine if you are an Israelite. Don't do it. It is of the devil and controlled by the devil, the so-called white man. Go with faith and see if the Holy Spirit bear witness with your Holy Spirit. Those DNA tests will have you thinking you are 20% European, 30% African, 15% Asian, 30% American, and 5% raccoon. Leave it all alone, y'all. Remember Matthew 13, 25. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tars among the wheat and went his way. Generations of mixing. The enemy is Satan and the tars are people that are not Israelites mixed in with us through fornication and interracial marriage and rapings. Verse 30. Let both grow together until the harvest and in the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, gather ye together first the tars and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. Verse 36. Then Yahawashai sent the multitude away and went into the house. And his disciples came unto him, saying, Declare unto us the parable of the tars of the field. He answered and said unto them, he that soweth the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom. But the tars are the children of the wicked one. The enemy that sold them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world. This is where we're at now. And the reapers are the angels. As therefore the tars are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be in the end of this world. That'll be judgment in the lake of fire. We are in the end of this world. Read the entire 13th chapter of Matthew for a better understanding. The Russian icons have been publicly known for a long time. This isn't nothing new. It's just new to you. Your minds are just now awakening to the truth of certain things in these last days. Some of you need evidence and confirmation from the white man and not from the prophets that God, your God, have given you.
Icons dating back to the 14th century brought together from private collections across Russia. It's very beautiful. It gives you goose pimples. It's a remarkable exhibition. It's an exhibition which feeds the senses. Everything is so grey outside at the moment. And here suddenly it's a feast for the eyes. And it's a feast that marks 100 years since religious icons started to be recognised as works of art. Before then, they were mainly viewed as religious objects, often left blackened over the centuries by the passage of time and added layers of paint. When we learned how to remove the dark layers, we discovered underneath an overwhelming beauty, to such an extent that it shocked André Matisse, who was in Moscow at the time. He said, it's here that artists should come to learn to paint, not to Italy. But today, only a small number of these masterpieces remain. Most were destroyed during the Soviet era. These icons are the survivors. If museums hadn't saved them, they wouldn't exist today. There are 50,000 icons in Russian museums. Before, there were millions. But now the future of this part of Russian heritage is up for debate. Are the icons best held by museums, or should they be returned to the country's churches? So we see that these religious icons are not only considered religious icons, but works of art over 100 years, and we saw that uh, the Soviet Union destroyed much of them. There were millions of them, and now there's only about 50,000. The Castile San Angelo in Rome is currently hosting an exhibition of 40 Russian icons that have left their country for the first time. They are pieces of art that were hidden after the October Revolution of 1917 in order to protect them from anti-religious destruction. It's the first time that a large number of Russian icons have come here to Italy. In addition, here are a dozen examples that have never before been moved. They appear for the first time in our catalog. Icons are usually painted on wood and meant to represent saints or sacred elements. The Orthodox tradition considers them as if they were the gospel, inspirations of God through the hand of the artist. Their deep symbolism is reflected from the meaning of icon as a representation or vision from another world. The wood evokes the Holy Cross through its gold background, divine light, and the cloth attached to the wood evokes the cloth that covered the body of Jesus Christ. Without a doubt, they have a great importance and a fundamental recognition in Russia because the icons represent for Russia what the pyramids represent for Egypt or the temples to the Greeks. The exhibition shows icons ranging from the 15th century until the early 20th century. It's a rare opportunity to see the religious soul of Russia through its ancient icons. She said great importance and fundamental recognition. But recognition of what? The only thing that it recognized is that the Israelites were black. As the Ukraine-Russia war drags on, Russian President Vladimir Putin has decided to move one of Russia's holiest icons from a museum to a Moscow cathedral. This arises a debate around Putin's growing reliance on the church. More on this in our next report. Emphasizing on the importance of the holy icon, Putin ordered Andrei Rublev's trinity be transferred to the Russian Orthodox Church from Moscow's Tretyakov Gallery for a year. The relocation of Russia's most well-known icon highlights how closely the war has intertwined politics and religion. Trinity is a 15th century artwork which is all set to take its place in the Cathedral of Christ the Saviour. The icon depicts the Oak of Mamre where the three angels visited Abraham in the book of Genesis. Researchers of the Russian Orthodox Church are arguing that this transfer of icons is a political move on behalf of Putin. He wants to keep the church on his side in this war by showing his respect to the religious institution. The West claims that Putin is framing the war as a battle for the survival of Russia, to which the researchers further demand that he needs to prove that the war is not his personal military activity but that there is a higher metaphysical mission in Russia that he is trying to fulfill. In the past, several Russian propagandists have used Christian symbolism about fighting the devil. 
They have even used anti-Christ symbols to rally support for a war that has gone on much longer than the expectations. The West says that it just wants to help Ukraine defeat Russia on the battlefield. But not at the cost of destroying Russia. On the other hand, Patriarch Kirill of Moscow, who is a close ally of Putin's, is portraying the war as a metaphysical battle for Russia's survival. So we see that this is a political move by Russia and Putin, but it's also a spiritual move by Russia and Putin. Numbers 24 verse 9. Putin is doing everything he can to fight the West, and he's using the truth of the Bible to help bring down the West by opening your eyes to something that you should already know and believe. So, you know who the real Israelites are. So what? Now what? Are you ready to clean your lives up and baptize your mind with the word of the Most High and make yourself ready to stand before our Heavenly Father? Some of our people wonder why Putin and Russia are cozying up to Niger in Africa. You know, they say Niger is really nigger. We'll go with Niger. The natural resources of Niger include uranium, coal, gold, iron ore, tin, phosphates, petroleum, molybdenum, salt, gypsum. Niger has some of the largest uranium reserves in the world. Also, Russia wants to displace American and European influence from the African continent, which is a good thing. Let's face it, the left hand of the greedy so-called white man, or Edom, has been up the butt of Africa for centuries, holding them back from basic progress, using them as lab rats, and turning them against their own people. So why not try the right hand of Russia with Putin leading the charge? Putin is a different sort. Africa needs a strong friend to withstand a strong enemy. The Most High did help King Cyrus, remember? And God will help the righteous of his people Israel, wherever we are on earth or in space. You heard correct. Here is another reason you may not have considered as a motive of Putin's Russia. Why they are cozying up with Niger. Numbers 24 verse 9. He couched, he lay down as a lion, and as a great lion, who shall stir him up? Blessed is he that blesseth thee, and cursed is he that curseth thee. The Most High said, blessed are those people that bless Israelites. People, if they bless Israelites, they are blessed. And cursed are those people that curse or do harm to the Israelites, the children of God. And those that hate us, those that do harm to us, are cursed. Putin dealing with the war-hungry West, I mean, all of y'all have seen the news on the internet, is looking for all the help he can get from the Most High by blessing God's people, the Israelites, acknowledging the true color of Christ because white Christ is a lie. Now, at the end of the day, it's not about color, it's about bloodline. But color is interjected because color was used as a lie to deceive many. Now color must be used to correct that lie. Christ is a white lie that has deceived for centuries and have caused much evil in the world. And Putin will get the help he need for a time. For a time. Then America will fall real soon sooner than most of you know. You need to repent. Then Russia will fall, and then the EU, the European Union, will ride out until Christ's return. See my video, The Three-Headed Eagle, Edom's Destiny, 2nd Ezra's. For the record, and for the truth, Putin never verbally said anything about guiding his nation to black Jesus. Let me say that again. Putin 
never verbally said anything about God and his nation to black Jesus. He never said black Jesus. Putin never used the phrase black Jesus. And he never verbally said that blacks are the real Israelites. But, listen carefully, but he did show it by rolling out Russian icons more openly. See, you can say something without saying it. You can say things simply by showing pictures. Putin doesn't have to mention black Jesus or black Israelites because the iconic antiquities of Russia and other places in Europe, yeah, there are other places that have these things too, says it all. They speak for themselves and your prophets, myself and other brothers, speak for you. Putin and other world leaders cannot verbally speak out and say that we are the true people of God. It would be a death sentence for them because long ago they raged against us and against the Most High and made an agreement after taking crafty counsel against God and his people and the hidden ones. The hidden ones are the Israelites of today that they will cut us off from being a nation. Psalms 83, verse 2 through 8. Mission accomplished. But we are rising in Christ, and we rise to eternal glory. Praise Yahweh. We can't be stopped. Now, I'm going to show you a video. This video is flow not there, and this video is a hoax. Look here, Israel, and the rest of the nations out there. I'm going to show you the false video that so many people believe. Putin's annual nation address 2024. The real video is on the left. Nothing about icons, nothing about black Jesus, nothing about blacks being Israelites, nothing about God and his nation to black Jesus. Go and check this out. It's a two hour or so video, his annual address. Someone took a piece of this and dubbed it President Vladimir Putin Reveals Black Jesus 2024 Year of the Truth. This is a false video because they added false translations. Icon images added for effect or true. Icon images are the real deal. Israelites being black are true. Deuteronomy 30, verse 1. And it shall come to pass when all these things are come upon thee, the blessing and the curse which I have set before thee, and thou shalt call them to mind among all nations, whether Yahweh thy God have driven thee, and shalt return unto Yahweh thy God, and shalt obey his voice according to all that I command thee this day, thou and thy children with all thine heart, and with all thy soul, that then Yahweh thy God will turn the captivity and have compassion upon thee, and will return and gather thee from all the nations, whether Yahweh thy God hath scattered thee. If any of thine be driven out unto the outermost parts of heaven, space, from thence will Yahweh thy God gather thee, and from thence will he fetch thee. And Yahweh thy God will bring thee into the land which thy fathers possessed, and thou shalt possess it, and he will do thee good, and multiply thee above thy fathers. And Yahweh thy God will circumcise thine heart, which is the mind, and the heart of thy seed, your children, to love Yahweh thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, that thou mayest live eternally. And Yahweh thy God will put all these curses upon thy enemies, and on them that hate thee, which persecuted thee. The wrath of the Most High is the Nemesis star system, and Nibiru, the largest planet in that system. Nemesis is in our solar system now, and causing the global destruction we have seen so far. The worst has not arrived yet. It will come quickly and suddenly to America. For in one day, America will fall. 
in one day, America will be no more. And all those living in America will not have time to repent when that happens. You need to repent now. Turn to the Most High. Recognize who you are. Be proud of it. Knowing you are an Israelite is good. Acting like an Israelite is even better. But obeying the Most High is perfection. Destruction comes, and then the kingdom. Time is short, Israel. So remember, tick-tock.